Hi folks and welcome back to LPJ Models. In today's video I'm going to be reviewing two gallery airbrushes, the GHAC98D and the GHAD39. Both of these airbrushes were sent to me for free for review purposes, but that does not mean I'm going to gloss over any problems if there are any. And we can't test an airbrush without having a sacrifice from the stash to test the airbrushes on. So this lovely 148 Edward FW190 has kindly volunteered. Before we go any further, let's take a quick look inside the box to see what we get. Both airbrushes are pretty similar in this regard, so let's just open up one and take a look. The box is quite nicely presented. I know that's pretty inconsequential, but it's nicer than the airbrush turning up in a blister pack. In the top of the lid we have a parts breakdown, especially useful if you think you've lost a bit. You also get a quick start guide. This is pretty good, it gives you a good guide on how to start spraying with the airbrush, but it also has some pages dedicated to troubleshooting any problems you might get. Most of these are going to be down to not cleaning it properly, but it's a good guide to have just in case. It also comes with a test card showing you how the airbrush is supposed to spray, but more on this later. And then inside the box obviously is the airbrush itself. These come seated in some foam and there's a little wiggle room so they won't get damaged in transit but you might notice they're a bit dirty. That's because over the past few months, I've been putting these airbrushes to use in a variety of projects. The Armour Hobby Fokker E5 in 172, the Toco model stock with one and a half strutter, and this little 135th tractor that may or may not yet turn into a video. I thought the review would be more fair and a lot more valid if I'd used the airbrushes for a little while and showed them in use with our friend here, Mr. FW190. Before we go any further, I'm gonna show you some of the specs of these two airbrushes. Then we'll take a closer look at the airbrushes themselves, give them a good clean because they'll need it, and get some paint on this FW190. First up is the GHAC98D. This has a 0.38 and a 0.5 needle and nozzle, both switchable and it's fairly easy. The inner paint cup is supposed to have a mirror-like finish. In theory, that should make cleanup a bit easier. Another apparent benefit is the needle is made from a higher quality material and polished to a finer finish which should aid paint flow. At time of recording, this airbrush retails at 70 pounds, 80 euros, or 89.99 US dollars. Our second airbrush, the GHAD39, sports a 0.35 and a 0.5 needle and nozzle combo. The inner paint cup is labeled as just smooth, but this one also comes with two different sized paint cups. This one's also a bit cheaper, coming in at 44.99 pounds, 52.66 euros, and 57.15 US dollars. So both airbrushes are fairly reasonably priced. Cheaper than both Awata and Harder and Steenbeck's entry-level airbrushes. But they are also dearer than the cheapest of the cheap Amazon nasties. And one advantage over those they seem to have is a customer services department and what looks like readily available spare parts. Spare parts availability was always something that concerned me when it came to the cheaper airbrushes on the market. But Gallery being a mid-priced brand seemed to have that covered, which is a good sign. Let's run through a couple of features that are on the airbrushes themselves. Both have an adjustable backstop, which, while it's something I don't use, can be quite handy for beginners to make sure they don't pull the trigger back too far. These seem to be fairly well tooled and there's no grinding or crunchiness when turning them. The trigger actions seem fairly smooth. There's a slight difference in trigger feel between the two airbrushes. I prefer the GHAD39 a little bit more. It just feels a bit firmer. One thing that I like is the needle chuck is easily accessible. So if you've got a minor blockage, you can just pull the needle chuck back and clear out any goobers. Not all airbrushes have the needle chuck exposed, so it's a nice feature. Another nice feature out of the box is the addition of a quick release adapter. Usually you've got to pay an extra few quid for these and it makes swapping airbrushes quick and easy. The paint cups on both airbrushes are easily removable with a screw thread. This will hopefully make cleanup a bit easier, allowing you to reach into the paint cavity with ease. The needle cap is also removable, a fairly standard feature, making cleaning a bit easier or meaning you can get right up close to the model. The nozzle looks well made and the aperture is nice and round. The nozzle with its air channels is one of Gallery's USPs. It's something I haven't seen on a lot of nozzles in the past, and it's supposed to help the paint atomize better. The needles both look nicely made, and visually I can't really tell any difference between them. 
In premium airbrush packages, you usually get a test card where the airbrush has been tested at the factory. It's usually squiggles sprayed onto a piece of card. Gallery do supply these, but they are printed, which completely misses the point. So it would be a good idea for Gallery in the future to either spray these properly or don't bother at all, because it does seem a bit silly. If you look closely under magnification, you can see the dots from the printing process. I have had though, several reports from people online saying there is a paint residue left in their airbrush. So they are tested before leaving the factory, but maybe not to the level the test card shows. Right, let's give these airbrushes a thorough strip down and clean and get onto some spraying. Most of the cleaning process with these airbrushes is really straightforward. They're easy to assemble and disassemble, and easy to clean. There is one caveat, the paint cups. Because of the way these are designed, there is a small area that collects paint, which can be sold with a quick swipe of a cotton bud, but it's a bit annoying if you like to change colors on the fly quickly, like I do. Cleaning done, let's do some painting. To take some of the guesswork and chance out of the paint test, I'm using a paint that I know sprays excellently without the need for thinner. And if you've seen the channel, you've probably guessed what it is, MRP. I'm going to use two lots of German Luftwaffe World War II colors to test the two airbrushes. For the GHAC 98D, I'm using Grunblau, RLM81 and RLM82. For the GHAD 39, I'm going to use Late War 74, 75, 76 RLM colors. The way I'm going to structure each test is by doing a base coat, camouflage and then mottling. So we'll start with the 98D and the Grundblau and see if the paint sprays and lays down smoothly. After a few passes you can start to tell that the paint is going down smoothly. It does seem to atomize really nicely. You can tell that because the feathering around the edge of the main spray area is quite fine and it's not speckly like you see on some cheaper airbrushes. Also there doesn't seem to be any unwanted splatter when you move the trigger from open to closed. So the 98D seems pretty good for base coating. Sadly, the shape of the paint cup rears its head again. I hope in the future Gallery fixes this slight oversight. Now it's time to see how the GHAC 89D copes with camouflage. The color I'm shooting now is brown violet. The way I achieve this is usually by drawing the outline of the shape I want to paint and then infilling. And the airbrush is handling this quite nicely. Wing roots are always a tricky area to airbrush, so it's a good place to test it. It seems to be performing quite well here, but the small flecks in the paint indicate a minor tip dry issue. This may be fixed on my end by thinning the paint more, or polishing the needle more with a cutting compound just to make it flow a bit better. There is still very little overspray, and the paint is laying down in a smooth controlled manner. Moving on to the green now, I'm able to achieve pretty satisfactory results. Overspray and excess splutter is at a minimum, and line work is still fairly crisp, and coverage, again, nice and smooth. So that's the bare bones basics of model spraying covered so far. Let's up the ante and do some finer spray work with some mottling. Here I've taken the end cap off so I can get in nice and close, and I'm able to lay down some mottling in a nice tight controlled manner. The paint's also atomizing really nicely, which is great for this kind of fine work. After a few minutes spraying, I did start to get some more tip dry and specks of paint, flicking from the airbrush to the finish. That being said, although it looks quite bad here, under normal viewing conditions that aren't magnified, it does look okay. I wonder whether that vented nozzle is perhaps blowing too much air over the end of the nozzle and the needle. So the GHAC 98 is giving me pretty decent results. Camo work is good, mottling is, is okay, 
It sprays smoothly and I haven't really had any problems, apart from that build up in the paint cup. That's a tad annoying. Right, let's move on to the next airbrush, the GHAD39. This has a slightly finer nozzle than the previous one, despite the cheaper price. And again, I'm using MRP colors RLM 74, 75 and 76. Let's get spraying. Once again, we're starting with a general coverage test to see if the paint lays down smoothly and consistently. And once again, once the paint is brought up to opacity, the results are really nice. A note on the color, this RLM 76 seems to be taking a bit longer to build up to coverage than the Grunblau, but it won't take long. Don't fall asleep just yet. And the paint has gone down without any dramas. Nice and smooth, no excess speckling. Ideal. Let's paint the camo. The contrast of the RLM 75 against the plastic isn't great, so I'm starting in the wing route. And despite this airbrush being cheaper, it looks like I'm able to achieve fine line work with at least an equivalent quality of the slightly dearer one. Spraying seems controlled and there's minimal overspray. I'm sure if I got in closer, that would be eliminated completely. The paint again is going down smoothly and consistently. On both airbrushes, the trigger action is smooth and there's no sticky spots. There's nothing worse than pulling the trigger back for paint and ending up with nothing until finally you get a big splat. Luckily, not the case, but that is something I have encountered on both cheaper and higher end airbrushes. I digress. The Camo Green RLM74 is again going down nicely with no dramas. I'd happily freehand the camo on a model with one of these airbrushes. So camo established, how does this one handle mottling? Let's find out. There's good atomization, very little overspray, if any, and the airbrush is spraying in a smooth controlled manner with no pulsing. I actually think this one, the GHAD39, handles mottling better than the GHAD89D. That was a mouthful. There is again a small amount of tip dry. Perhaps thinning the paint further will eliminate this. Okay, with the main tests done on both airbrushes, let's move on to a summary. Gallery airbrushes have been dividing the model community over the past few months. Some people are having great results and really enjoying using these airbrushes. Some people have had poor results, possibly due to quality control issues. Gallery have also exploded onto the model scene and the airbrushing scene in general, with scores of YouTubers reviewing these gallery airbrushes. Me included. I don't know how many of these content creators got sent airbrushes for free like I did, but I bet it's a large proportion. And one of the debates online that has come up because of this is how trustworthy a YouTube reviews. I mean, if we get our backs scratched with free stuff, we should say nice things, right? I don't believe that's the case, and I don't believe we have to. This is why I spent several months using these airbrushes to generate an honest opinion before presenting this review to you. And I like to think that I'm presenting this to you without bias, but that's for you to decide. And here's my final opinion. For the price, I think these airbrushes are pretty good. There are a few quirks and problems. The paint cups on both of these airbrushes I'd like to see refined to make them easier to clean. It might be a minor point to some people, but I really like chucking paint in, spraying, chucking the next color in, and carrying on. And that makes that a little bit more tricky. The paint test card. That either needs to go completely straight in the bin, or to be done properly at the factory with each individual airbrush. But that could prove to be a costly option. It might add to the manufacturing price, but it would mean that each airbrush would be properly tested at the factory, potentially eliminating some of the QC issues that people seem to have had. The pricing structure on these two specific airbrushes is quite interesting. They both perform extremely similarly, and I don't think that extra £30 is justified in a slightly higher quality needle or nozzle, or paint cup. Bad points out the way, I do believe these airbrushes are a step up from the cheap £35 Amazon knockoffs. A good availability of spares, coupled with access to proper customer service, is worth spending the extra money on. There's nothing worse than bending a needle or busting a nozzle and not being able to replace them. For the price point, I was pretty impressed with how the airbrushes both sprayed. The actions were smooth, and I think this camouflage came out pretty good. I think the GHAD39 performed better than the 98D in the spray tests. 
the very slightly finer nozzle gave it an advantage whilst doing finer work. And it's £30 cheaper. So if you're considering one of these two airbrushes, go for that one, the GHAD39. It's the day after compiling the review that you've just seen. I needed to paint a vehicle in full camo for an upcoming demo. So I reprimed and resprayed the FW190 using the GHAD39. I thinned my paints a little bit more and squeezed out as much as I could out of the airbrush to show you what you could get with a time and effort paint job as opposed to a demo paint job. With thinner paints, I was able to achieve much smoother and finer mottling and a result that I'm pretty pleased with. It doesn't quite have the finesse of spray as my Harder and Steamback with a 0.15 needle and nozzle combo, but it's pretty good and not everybody is as fussy as I am. And at the end of the day, I'm gonna use these for my builds in the future. Maybe not for the crazy detail work, but they can handle a good chunk of it. And with that, my airbrushes are back to being absolutely filthy and I love it. I wanna say a huge thanks to my patrons for supporting my work. Your support is much appreciated, thank you. And I'd also like to thank Gallery for sending these airbrushes out for review. And I'm James from LPJ Models. I hope you enjoyed my review. I'll see you in the next one.